Hello everybody, welcome to the AeroBB quarterfinal between Sporkbearer and Pybot. We've got Pybots come from Division 3, I believe. I'm not certain though, so don't quote me, even though this is the whole point of the thing. Um, and he's got a really good, really good chauve team here. Um, basic ones to stand on the LOSs, which is kind of what you like, right? Of course, well, you'd rather them all be mighty blown uh, stand firm as well, but at least they're guards. It means they're a bit more expendable. At least they've got their guards. Guard on both of his bulls, very nice. Not so nice against elves. Um, I remember the guy in our division had uh, had tackle on his bulls to deal with myself and Elliot, whereas Pybot has gone more bash orientated with the guards. So he's got seven guards and then an eighth on the hobo. So eight guard and a guard hobo. Guard hobo, defenseless guard hobo, is obviously a little bit of a liability. We'll love to be able to take him out. It's, div it's division three, yeah, yeah. Spokes division three and Pybos division two, yeah. And, uh, and then obviously full claw pommer there. Claw, pom, horns, juggernaut. I think jump up is better than horns, honestly. Um, but... You know, Horns is great, right? The, the, the two things that a that a chaff blocker misses when he's a claw pommer is movement and strength. So this is solving one of them. And again, he's 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 based it more for like the the bash matchup, right? Getting the horns in for the for the uh, assistless blitzers or um, three dice blitzers. Horns is fine, like it's not wrong. I just think the jump up is so good, like making the movement seven when they're on ground is amazing. So yeah, I love jump up on them, but Horns totally fine. And a second, a second claw. So yeah, really pretty nice chaff team. Um, Twelve players total, and Blood Bowl Two has decided to turn off the skills for a second. And Pybot's team is also, really, I mean, two really nice teams. Honestly, um, Spoke is oh, hopefully he doesn't make this mistake of leaving this guy on the bench. But but you can see here a blood step guarder, another blood step, and they've lost the skills again. Okay, he's just put him on the... No, he hasn't put him on the pitch yet. So we've got two... We've got three Bludge Step Guard Blitzers. Dodge Guard, Dodge Guard, Lino. Two Witch Elves, both with Tackle. Wrestle Stripper, Mighty Blow. More more sidesteps, so loads of sidestep. Five sidestep players on the team. Um, amazing. Amazing, amazing team. Um, and 12 players as well. And let's see if there's any inducements. There aren't, so yeah, super interesting game. Is is Spork going to flip it up? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, betrayed by Blood Bowl 2. Oh, no. Hello, Calcium 4. Well... <laughs> Yeah, that is a disaster, isn't it, there, from, from Spork. Absolute disaster to start us off. <laughs> no offence, but, yep, that's a bit of a booby. Oh, I've got it turned up way too loud, that's what happened. Oh, I, I, was, I was doing something earlier. Never mind. Right, we've got a much more normal volume now. I was wondering why I was having laughing in a shout to hear myself think. So, uh, oh, bangs down the guys. It, this it's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, he's he's frenzy trapped himself here, hasn't he? Like uh, three, four, five, four, five. Yep, that was a little bit dodgy. Could have like hit from here and then uh, gone into more that way, right? But it was still always going to have to dodge off the classic blitz then dodge. Whoop! Did a pass! Okay, I mean, I'm not a fan of that. Whoop! I'm not a fan of passing, uh, even with four rerolls. Like, it just wasn't necessary, was it, right? Like, just keep your guy, put, put, move your blitzer up here and don't get hit by the, uh, by the bull. Um... Yes, exactly so. Yeah, yeah. This is that was a bit, you know. I do that play in a, in in the league matches that where the result didn't matter, but uh, once the result matters, I think that's a very very rowdy pass. Uh, 
not blitzing the claw bomber. I mean, he, he could have blitzed this guy, right? He could have blitzed this guy or, or defense this guy. I think he's in range of. But he is targeting the witch elf with just mighty. Gets a removal. And I mean, are we just going straight for a two turn here from a uh, spork? Like, that must be why he passed, right? To give himself the, uh, the two turn option. Lovely AV break, though a little less relevant than he'd like coming there, but it gives him a potential switch back. Nope. We've got another frenzy trap. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Gets the power. Blockless block. Well, honestly, the the previous round I thought Spork played very well, and uh, this round, um, it's hard to say anything nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Spork. <laughs> This is not this is not good blood ball, yeah. This is not good blood ball. This is this is this has been you know, who knows if it's if it's if it's playoff nerves or you know, the pressure of like, you know, the, the chorfs, right? Like it's it's hard. It's hard playing chorfs, I tell you. You know, like Whoop Rolls a one. <laughs> the, 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 I mean, it can be. Oh my god! Brilliant play from Spork. Absolute brilliant play from Spork Bearer there. Left on the uh, <laughs> the Bull Centaur dodge. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so he couldn't get. He couldn't reach with this guy, could he? So there you go. Left on the Bull Centaur dodge, and gets his just reward. Oh yeah, also what wasn't wasn't even starting on the pitch for Pybot is this agility four carrier, so completely insane team for Pybot. Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> incredible. Incredible uh dodge fail Kaz. So now uh we might get we might get some kind of surfs maybe happening up here. And uh the ball not getting sacked, so it went from diabolical to uh completely bailed out by a snake yep yeah he can't beat a bit of space cadetting yeah that's blood bowl isn't it that is that is blood bowl in a nutshell i don't like committing the blood steppers versus tacklers right like i think maybe I can't remember it is the the one that I did previously, but um I think he did like get hit a decent amount. But uh it's a bit da more dangerous, isn't it, when you get hit by a tackle a decent amount. Oh. That, this is why I wouldn't have passed, right? This is why I wouldn't have passed. Because Versus chorfs and dwarfs specifically, you need your rerolls for those dodges. Whereas versus other teams, you can do a cheeky pass and then uh, you know and get away with like dinking away a reroll for no reason. But when you're against chorfs, you're going to need those rerolls just to move your guys around. Doesn't doesn't do wisely. Doesn't attempt the dodge this turn. No, I'm not sure. Where, where was he here? Was he here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I might have been tempted to move him there at the end. The problem is, it's just leaving him a three-two, isn't it? So it's not even putting a lot of heat on. But I wouldn't mind doing the GFIs with him at the end of the turn. 
But but I quite like also just like going you know going middle here, going to the middle of the board. He's, he can react to anything, can't he? And I know like I know he's already wide wide over there. But if you follow him, maybe he switches back or something. Or, so yeah, I don't hate just taking the centre there with that ball. One D the guard. Oh, do this one first. Yeah, not piling on his sad. So he just scores. No, he doesn't score. Okay, we're stalling. We're stalling at least a turn. That's what. That's another reason to like just moving the bull here, right? So you don't risk the the one in thirty six GFI fails. So you can just you still got him to to punch the you know put, put, well still potentially threaten a stall without having to roll any dice. There's a lot of value in. Oof. Yeah, getting the blood on the bull is what you want, isn't it? That's where you always want like a bludger on his bull, I guess. Same with the hobbles. If you can get your bludgers threatening the rubbish hobbles. Um, it's a bit of a bit of a problem having having the guy doing the stalling like at the complete other end to these four players. But you know, Chaucer are a bit slow, aren't they? So if they move away from those four players, maybe you can get it back to those four. Oh man. Greedy GFI. So the so the horns makes it a 3D though. And gets the pow. Does pile on, correct. Kaz. That's why I always pile on. Well done. Panthero! I always like Panthero. <laughs> And then this is when Sporkbearer looks at his bench and says, Oh my god, I didn't even feel the other one. <laughs> oh no. I don't know when he when he realised, but uh oh. Oh man. Rolls a one and gets stunned. <laughs> It's hard to stall this, isn't it? It is hard to stall this. Strength four. Oh my god, he's frenzy trapped into an uphill and gets the double pow. <laughs> this guy, Rackle, to strength four, about to smash the ball, survives the uphill frenzy trap. Oh boy! <laughs> well, he gets the score, and uh, that's all I got to say about that. Man, I really want to press Q and E to switch the uh, to switch the. That's that's great. Honestly, the camera controls in Blood Bowl Three, brilliant. Replay function in Blood Bowl Three, brilliant. Way better than Blood Bowl Two, apart from the kick animation and the coach name display. Is this football? Blood Bowl 2. Blood Bowl 2, so. <laughs> this is this is not NAF. It's not fumble. It's Blood Bowl 2. And now Spokebar has to defend a four turn drive from Pybot. So Pybot might be able to get bang this in in four turns. He does have an agility four hobble. He's still got a reserve, so he might be able to... He can't really foul, unfortunately, because all of his players are too good. All of his players are too good to foul, pretty much, right? A strength 4. I mean, the strength 4 one's great. And then the other one's got guards, so he can't really ever foul. Apart from on defense. It's not NAF. This is the... When the, the NAF is uh, tomorrow, Keith. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm not watching that until Dimmy's president. Oh dear. Well, you go get a little KO there. Nah, I'd watch, I'd watch the NAF if Dimmy was president. Tell you what, you know. Speaking of NAF, I can exclusively reveal absolutely nothing. But, trust me when I say <laughs> plans are afoot for uh, good things in Blood Bowl 3. So there you go. I realise that's absolutely terrible and unbelievably vague, but... <laughs> I love you, Elliot. Um, <laughs> but, trust me, there's, uh, there's plans afoot for big things. There you go. Honestly, genuinely... Genuinely excited for things happening in Blood Bowl 3. Not just. Not just. <laughs> because I'm an official caster for the... For the uh, season finals. Because I'm also actually... Uh... Oh yeah, oh shit. Oh, that naff thing is way out of date, isn't it? Flip me. Uh, I am, I'm not being a cyanide lapdog. Uh, lap dog, lap dog. This is gen genuine. I, it, you know, come on. I know Hamez has been joking about calling me a shill and stuff. If you know anything about me, you know I'm completely incapable of uh, of generating false enthusiasm. <laughs> so <laughs> um, there are some good things, I think. There you go. Thanks, Steve. And, uh... Yeah, exactly, exactly, so right? Exactly, like, I, I, you know, like, I can't, I can't fake it. Right, here we go. This is interesting, isn't it? Turn seven. So, uh, sports, uh, Pybot's got two turns left to score. And, uh, we can two, we can 2D this guy, put in a guard. And then, what do we do? With that, not a lot, right? Because there's another guard here, so you've got to bang him out. So you can you can bang and bang, but then where do they go? One gets powered to here, the other gets powered to there, and then you can punch this guy as well. And if you power him, he occupies that, and you can't hit the ball. So it's it's not that easy, right? Or you guess you power onto there. So you power him to there, then you power him to there, then you power him to there, and follow. And then he's got guard, and then you can hit from the corner. So you can get two dice on the ball here. Let's see if it is played that way. Uh, he doesn't get the pow, so already you can't. <laughs> now what he could have done, though, with that, we could have thought about... Look, there's a great, great player here. Follow here. Move a player in there. Block this guy. Chain him into there. Put an extra player in behind. So, like, two players in behind now. Block him into there. Into there, into there, he's got stand firm. Fuck. Scratch that idea. Imagine he didn't have stand firm. <laughs> Do we have elite player? No. Okay, well, if he didn't have stand firm, he could have he could have chained all the way and then got him out the back. Would have been really nice. But yeah, the stand firm was in the right place for Pybot. So I reckon that that unfortunately being a push I mean uh, probably that probably stops the, the ball sack there. Oh, rolls the one. Puts in the reroll and gets it. Problem here is there's not anyone behind there, is there? This. This is uh, on a pal can break through here. So I'd like somebody behind there as well. In that case, that kind of does the job right. They kind of screen there. Dodges those off. Dodges those off. It's 
pretty decent, pretty decent. He can't blitz because he'd have to GFI. The strength four rackle comes in. Not so good hitting with, with, with the wrestler, right? But I guess using the guy furthest away. Movement four. Uh, movement four. Strength four is pretty good, isn't it? No assist required. Are we going to swing around the other bull or just just the one in the chorf, maybe? The problem you've got here is uh, is L's coming around the back to chain him out, isn't it? Or you can just dodge in and uh, try to surf. Oh, that actually makes it worse. That actually makes it much worse. Doesn't it? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that actually makes it much worse because now you can get two players in here, block him, pow him, and then you've got the hit on the ball to surf. So yeah, that was a... That was... Like, because back here, at least it's hard to get the elves to, like, these places to chain him out. But, yeah, by putting him in there, that was uh, very, very dangerous. This guy should probably, like, got here somehow. Or, like, maybe a double G a fighter here. But, yeah, this is this is given a spoke bearer a very... And it lets him... Oh, look how good putting this guy in here is. Oh, no, he's not going for it. So, this guy going there is amazing, right? Because the sidestep as well and the guard to get the assist on the hit. Yep. Well, that's a shame because that would have been great, obviously, surfing the ball. Holds of people in contact with tackle, so not much you can do about that, but does get the uh, sidestepper there. Probably wanted to have, like, if you are going to do this, you probably want, like, you know, both sidesteppers there, right, to be the guys who get hit. Um. Yes, there we go. So we've got that guy out as well. So not terrible, not a terrible. Like you know, it's it's a bit safer defense, but I guess might not be. But it's like it's the more it's the more conservative approach, isn't it, of just screening? But the problem is versus Edge Four, it's not that good. And also, um, you know, I think surfing the ball is a, like for how hard it was to do. I think surfing the ball was was way easier. Maybe an uphill, I think, because of the guard, but still. Oh. Um. Should have gone here. Should have gone here. There you go. There you go, Spork. Should have sidestepped to here. He should have blitzed from here, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, that's just three, three, two. Whereas if he'd gone up here, it'd have been like, I guess you follow, so that you can go here if you want, and then you, and then you'd have to just go down the sideline on like a three, four, three, three, two. But um, yeah, instead. This is uh, this is way too easy. Yeah, this, this guy he had a sidestep up here. Like he couldn't he couldn't go to one of these squares right and leave it just to. I, no, he couldn't stay where he was, so he couldn't go to these two and just leave it free. So the only option is one of these three, and uh, these two both really do nothing, and this does something. So yeah, that was the that was the sidestep square. And honestly, Pybot should have re-rolled it right. Pybot should have re-rolled it. Should re rolled the hit. Because. Oh, well, should he? So, Pybot should have blitzed from here to stop him sidestepping into that square with his body, right? So, if Pybot. The problem is the wrestle, I guess. I guess Pybot was thinking about the wrestle. But even if he if, if he powers him and he sidesteps to here, it's still like making it a three. 
Oh, look, if he powers him to there, then he can follow and go down the sideline. So, yeah, maybe the, maybe this was the correct square to blitz because of the wrestle aspect. But he should have re-rolled the hit, I'm sure. I'm sure he should have uh, re-rolled the hit with the Rackle to just get him down because, you know, he should have assumed the correct sidestep square, right? Blitzing with a carrier is terrible. He's got sidestep, so he just, he just sidesteps and then can't he just sidestep into a into a much worse square for you? Does it guarantee 3-2, three, 3-2, two, three, two? does it? Does he not? Okay, well there you go. I'll trust Sol. Millions wouldn't. Oh yeah, because that stops the, because that's the correct, yeah, of course, because that's the correct sp square, yeah, no, no, you're correct, because that was a course that we just talked about where the correct squares to sidestep were, and they were literally only, that was the only possible sidestep square, so yeah, so if you blitz from that square, then um, if he sidesteps up and to the, then you passed him, so yeah, yep, so blitzed with the, blitz with the ball carrier, even though you're less likely to knock him over, um, guarantees an e easier dodging. So, yeah, yeah, 100%. And then you don't even get easy dodges doing it with the other guy, so yeah. Yep, yeah, no, correct, Sol. Ball carrier blitz, 100%. So now it's 1-1, one, one, and Pybot's got the ball. And, uh... Down to 10 players. <laughs> <laughs> Golden sticking. <laughs> yeah, well done, Gold Star. Gold Star for Sol. We had Gold Stars, you know, when I was at school. And I remember. I remember there was... Uh, there was there were two girls in my class who were clever. And... Uh, there was like... Oh, I, I could, one of them was like just over halfway. And I was like a third of the way across, like, and then and then the the smartest girl was like the entire row, and then ahead of us on the second row as well. <laughs> she was very a very clever girl, to quote Jurassic Park. But I still I was still third. I was still third despite not doing any work. So that's pretty good, isn't it? I might have done some work when I was a kid. I don't know. When I was very young, <laughs> when I was very young, I might have done work. I, I soon got it beaten out of me. The will to get gold stars. <laughs> Blitzing the stand firm. Not what I'd have done. And it's actually not what I'd have done, right? Best play is to blitz this uh, bull. And then if you power him, you get you don't have to make this dodge, right? It's the play, isn't it? For sure. For sure, you blitz this guy. Get the push. You get two players here. To uh, to like switch the side to stop the side switch a bit, and get to screen in the front. Not the best story ever told, is it? I knew somebody who was clever once, but uh, I don't know why. I just I just remember. I just remember the board. I can still see the board now with all of the gold stars on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was so important to my childhood, but I can still see that board with the gold stars on. So I mentioned it, you can't stop me. I can say whatever the fuck I want. Um... I don't know that it's terrible. I don't know that it's terrible. I guess you're thinking for the one turn. But, like, he's got to expose good players because it's all he's got. I run into this problem a lot with my with my Dark Elves. It's like, when all you have is is grade A players. It, it sucks, right? Because you don't, you don't want to expose this guy because he's defenceless then. Then you've got a defenceless guard getting claw pommed. So, yeah, but that's so that's it. That's the problem. The guy behind it hasn't even got block. So it's 55 versus 75. If he blitzes him, at least he's got sidestep and stuff. I guess you could sort him with a different with a guard guy, since you're already exposing one guard. Expose the other guard as well. 
Well, you're exposing two guards, so he could have exposed the third guard, I guess, rather than the movement. But I don't. I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably rather expose a movement than a guard. I guess you can argue the one turn chance makes the uh, movement a bit more valuable. But there's like two stand firm on the chorf team. But yeah, it's a bit of a problem when like, see now now this is a bit better because. It's really hard to hit this guy, isn't it? So then having him, like, you really don't want to expose. Like, you don't want to, you, your good players are already exposed, right? Like, this is this is the thing. I think that's a, it's a fair comment, Team on Taylor, right? But, like, he's already exposed this guy, so, and this guy, and this guy. So, like, you know, you're already giving up attrition hits on him, so this guy being there doesn't really matter. So, if he wants to go for a 75% knockdown, he can if you expose this guy. So you might as well just give him the same ones. But yeah, there is the argument of the one turn making the movement more valuable than the guards. Gets the pow. Doesn't follow with claw pom. <laughs> Who can say if that's good or bad? <laughs> Is that even legal? <laughs> it's legal if, if they've got two dirty players and two bribes. Otherwise, you've got to pile that on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. It, it, it's, a, it's a worthy talking point, isn't it? Um, I think... Oh, God. I think what you don't want to do here is just roll an instant one. Um, but let's assume for a second that wasn't his plan. I wonder if there's a <laughs> if there's a way to you know chain the chain him out the back. And I'm not really right. You'd have to get in there. Yeah, no. It would be sick if you could chain him out the back, right? Like, that's something you should always think about, um, is if you can chain the ball. Like, in this kind of situation where he's got a lot of shit in front of the cage, it happened before, but there was a chance. But it didn't, wasn't a chance. It looked like there was a chance earlier. So you've got to look for, you've got to look for these, see if, you can, see if you can do something funky to chain him out the back. And then if you can, obviously, that's amazing, because then you can hit him. Though, actually, there are two guards at the back corner anyway, so it wouldn't be that good. But normally, people don't have guard on both back corners, right? So, like, you know, normally this guy wouldn't be guard. So if you could chain him back, then you could get a hit on him. But uh, I think he's just going to go in with a witch. But he's used his reroll already. And it's a disaster. And, uh, yep, that guy's powered. And if this guy's powered as well... And that's going to be... Does he make it three dice? No, he's just getting him forward. He can block this guy, right? Not even sidestep. Like, I don't hate making this a 3D, right? This guy can only go one square anyway. This guy can come up to here. So then you can make it a three dice with your, uh, with your horns. Okay, blitz from, blitz from up there. It's the same difference, right? Get the pow. Didn't actually need to follow, but he's following because he wants to pile on and then replace him as the cage corner. So that's good. Love to see the follow there and the pile on. You can be my wingman anytime. Four. Oh, shit. You can be mine. Do you know what? I should have I should have the the Goliath Four effect as the rage, shouldn't I? Rather than uh, rather than these old ones that I've got. But thank you very much, Lefe nineteen seventy five. Welcome to the uh, Blood Bowl two, era BB playoffs as uh, Spork rolls a one. <laughs> well, not not a not a five, and fails again to roll a five, and that is about all she rolled. There's like five. L's left, six L's left, and uh, oh yeah, this one's out here. And yep, yeah, it's uh, it's not good, is it? It's not good right now for Spork. He's, he can he can roll five pluses to uphill the ball, but 
you know, might as well, right? Because the team's deleted after this game if he loses. So he's got nothing to lose by uh, by doing things. This witch elf needs to be fouled, right? Because of the uphill. Um, uphill, she can uphill block to take out that cage corner. So. So yeah, it does make the foul. Okay. Oh, he's not. He's not going for. I mean, I guess there's no point. But he could have done. He could have uphill blocked. Stood up uphill blocked. Roll like a push, then a pow, and then somebody else could have dodged into the cage. But uh, <laughs> right in the foot. <laughs> I've never heard foot. But um, yeah, now this is, I don't like caging right next to her again, right? Like just go one further forward so that you're not basing that your corner on the witch elf. And then like, I know it's, I know it's like, you know, stupid, right? There's, there's, there's like one elf standing, but there's also no reason to be basing a jump up player at this point. So, you know, it's just like, uh, it's not even bad habit, is it's just more like not a good habit. I guess is the is the way of looking at it, you know, like how how art always says you're uh, you're all, you know, your your autopilot shouldn't do things like that and it's I guess that's more not having the good habit to just always do it. Because it's not gonna matter in this game, right? It's not gonna matter in this game. But by habit you shouldn't be leaving that player based. You could just one assist foul it. Uh, sorry, you could still two assist foul it, and still have the cage, just one one square further forward. Oh, she gets in. If he'd saved a reroll, something could have happened. But I mean, not really, right? He'd have lost no. Well, he wouldn't have lost an overtime necessarily, would he? Because with five, six, seven, maybe eight, he could have had eight plays and won the toss. So he actually could have won in overtime. Well, to be honest, right, Team Ant Taylor, here's the thing. You can only use one reroll, and uh, how likely is it anyway, right, with two with two stand firm? Not everybody's as good as Galentio at scoring one turns. <laughs> Banter. We can't all be dog to the dog. <laughs> Oh, who was the one that did the uh, reroll the Juggernaut Roger? Was that Moomin Slayer? That was a good one. Oh, <laughs> I think that's what Art deemed the worst one-turn attempt of all time, because he had a he had a Rat Ogre three dice blocked, three dice blitzed, rolled them both down, which with Juggernaut turns into a push. Didn't didn't take it. Used a loner reroll, which then worked and rolled th triple pals. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, and you know, Moomin Slay is good, right? Moomin Slay is good, but that's it, isn't it? You know, um, the blind panic of a playoff maze does things to people. People make mistakes, you know. PC to pick the skull on a blitz, right? Two dice blitz, I remember. Ch was it chat? I don't know if it was Chalice, just normal ladder game, but I remember him rolling a power and a skull and taking the skull. Daedal not scoring on turn 8. Shouldn't have not scoring on turn 16. Me not standing those players up versus Galentio. You know, any, anyone can make like a pretty bad mistake or misclick or whatever. The Daedal one was horrendous, yeah. Man. That was a hell of a war dancer he had. Oh, pitch invasion. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. Exactly, it's hard. Like, people people don't understand who haven't been in Blitzpit, I think. Well, may not understand. People who've been pip haven't partaken in Blitzpit. Just how grueling 
like back-to-back -back games of Blood Bowl are. They're pretty brutal. And, uh, you know, that's why, like, you know, streamers have pretty much just got to play on autopilot most of the game. You can't, like, you can't, well, you can, but it's it's hard to give, like, 110% focus for the whole game, right? Often, often you'll drop off for one turn even or whatever. So it's easier just to give zero focus. If you're going to stream three or four games, it's easier to just not focus at all. <laughs> <laughs> and just play at a much lower level than uh, than trying your hardest. Because if you try your hardest, you'll just burn out pretty quickly, I, I think, anyway. M maybe other people are different, you know. Who knows what the likes of uh, Magnus Carlsen are like. Maybe he could just could hyper-focus for 12 hours, but, you know. And, and maybe maybe Cruz's maybe autopilot was, you know, that much better than other people's, and that's how he, you know, one of the reasons why he could be so dedicated to ladder. I don't know. But, um... In general, it's hard playing a lot of Blood Bowl, and it's, you know, you can just take your eye off the ball a little bit, right, and then that mistake can lose you the game. Like, it's kind of brutal in an hour-long game, and one mistake just loses you the game. Um, but, yeah, Spork missed a few things there, didn't he? Spork, Spork missed a few things there, like the, the the surf and the ball carry was the big one, right? That was a that was a real good thing, and uh, obviously not, play, not fielding his bloodstep guard, maybe... Maybe got maybe was a bit too risky with his blood step guarders, but then the problem is he's got so many, he can't really. Uh, -hey -hey! He's got he's got so many that he can't really protect them. So he was always going to put them in harm's way a bit, but maybe should have played around the tackle pommer you know, a bit more. Maybe should have tried to conserve the rerolls, but not gone for the pass. So quite a few little things that uh, that Spoke wasn't really so good on there. But, you know, he did play a lot better, I thought, in the previous match. Round 16, I thought he played a lot better in that game. I think it was a bit off his game. And, uh, you know, missing the surf particularly was, was huge. Even, even though it would have, you know, maybe it's been uphill. Um, I think it probably had to have been uphill. But, you know, still, I think you've got to go for the uphill surf, right, rather than hoping hoping Pybot will, will fail some dice. It was obviously, like, easier for Pybot because he was the one steamrolling. Do you know what I mean? Like, loads of tackle, loads of mighty blow. Uh, he did pretty much steamroll. Uh, obviously, Sol spotted that blitz. He should have been with a ball carrier because then, then that wouldn't have given him the opportunity to do the incorrect sidestep. Um, but there you go. Congratulations to Pybot goes through the semi-final, and uh, Spork is out tragically. Tragically, the uh, the uh, recapper extraordinaire Spork bearer is is goes out. You know, in the quarter final. And uh, we have our first semi-finalist. There you go. Pybot is through. He'll be playing the winner of Elliot versus Hancock. Two elves. So that's a very nice draw for the Chorfs, isn't it? Getting a getting an elf team to beat up in the semi-final. And uh, the next one is going to be played. Actually, Galabranth and Papa Bout are both playing at the same time as me and PK83. So maybe what I'll do is I'll play my game versus PK83. And as soon as it's over, um, cast the replay of Galabranth and Papa Bow. Do you know when you're playing your game, Eliod? Please? Just flip a coin. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That's a pretty good idea. That's almost the same as playing Blood Bowl, honestly. So, yeah. And that's better because your players don't die. That's actually that's a great fucking solution, Eliod. God damn you. God damn you're clever. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't, uh, com congratulations to Pybot, commiserations to Sportbearer. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.